event that we have missed um, because I wasn't here and now Father Kyle's not here. So we're going to make do with what we're going to do today. So if you turn to page 84 in the Decision Point book, this book, or 85, it looks like this. This is the prayer we're going to use today. It's a very familiar prayer, actually. Um, we should probably say it every day during the pandemic. <laughs> okay, so let's say this together. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit, amen. God, grant me the serenity to accept the things I cannot change, courage to change the things I can, and wisdom to know the difference living one day at a time, enjoying one moment at a time, accepting hardships as the pathway to peace, taking, as Jesus did, this sinful world as it is, not as I would have it, trusting that you will make all things right if I surrender to your will, so that I may be reasonably happy in this life and supremely happy with you forever in the next. Amen. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Okay, children of God, all of my confirmandi. That's what we call you, confirmandi, confirmation candidates. You all have very special names. You all get to come up. I'll turn off the uh, projector. You're going to stand up here, and you're going to face them. How about that? Come on. You, you can move now. I promise. I promise. No one will bite. Come on up. Let's move this out of the way. Come on down. We should take a picture. Look how cute you all look. As I get lots of rolled eyes, but okay. <laughs> look at them all lined up. Someone take a picture. Look at the little, I love this. Okay, all I have to do is if you listen closely, it will tell you exactly what to say, okay? So use your ears, got it? The rite of enrollment is a ceremony in which the confirmation candidates state publicly that they are taking this step in their sacramental lives seriously. I present to all of you these baptized Catholics who seek to deepen their Christian commitment and become fully initiated into the church by receiving the sacrament of confirmation. Candidates, under the guidance of Christ and his church, and with the help of this community, your sponsors, and your family and friends, are you prepared to begin your preparations for the sacrament of confirmation? And if so, answer by saying, I am. Did you say I am? I am. Oh, I love it. Okay. Now there's a set of promises. If you agree to the following promises, please say, I do. Do you promise to give evidence of living according to Christ's teachings? Participate in the Holy Sacrament of Mass on weekends and holy days of obligation? Grow in relationship with Jesus Christ through daily prayer? Continue the process begun in you at, baptize, at baptism and continued in the Eucharist. Participate, participate actively in all the meetings and other activities provided by the confirmation program. Offer your talents and engage in service to this parish and community. Do you understand that this is just the beginning of your journey into adult faith? Lord God, your great love has drawn these candidates to seek and find you. Father, look upon them today, purify their hearts, and bring to fulfillment in them the plan of your grace so that they can faithfully follow Christ and receive the spirit of salvation. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Congratulations. Yay. That was very painless, right? <laughs> okay, you can take a seat.
so when we were supposed to meet last week, you should have gone over a lesson about Jesus. And we talked about Jesus. So the question that should be in your mind today, and you do not need to answer me out loud, this is your your question just for your mind and just to think about, is it's one thing to know about Jesus, it's another to make the decision to follow Jesus. So will you decide to follow Jesus? And if you do decide to follow Jesus, then the next question is, how in the world do you do that? If Jesus is supposed to be your friend as well as your savior, how do you form a relationship with him? And here's the answer. The same as you would form a relationship with anyone else here on earth. So you have to spend time with Jesus. You have to spend time in prayer. You have to spend time at mass. You have to receive sacraments. Read the Bible. There's so many different things that you can do. And it also means not only do you talk to Jesus, it also means you must listen to Jesus. And Jesus does talk to us. Jesus might not talk to you like, (laughs) I always think of Moses in the burning bush. How awesome would that be if you asked a question of God and the tree in front of you just went up in flames and God said, okay, Jen, this is what you need to do. Jen would be like, right on, okay. I'll just go do that. But that's not the way God typically works. But I do tell you, if that does happen to you, please let me know, because I I would love to write a new story on it. Um, Get a little Vatican involved to see about this miracle. But Jesus does speak to us, but we need to just take the time to listen. Sometimes Jesus does not speak in the right now. Okay, You can ask and beg the Lord for things, and you will not necessarily hear anything. But something could happen to you later in the day, and you go, oh, look at that. That was Jesus. That was the movement of the Holy Spirit. That is God in my life. So today, our aim is to talk a little bit about prayer. What is prayer? What is not prayer? And how do we develop a prayer life? So where I want to start is page 88 in this Decision Point book, page 88. And it's a question page. Okay, and I want you, um, with your adult, your sponsor, your parent, who's ever with you today, to talk about these three questions. I'll give you a couple of minutes to talk about this. Number one says, whom do you talk to every day and why? By the way, this is why your parents actually want to speak to you before you go to your rooms. You guys like your rooms. My kids love their rooms. Abby will admit in a heartbeat. They love their rooms. But you know, your parents actually want to get to know you, and if you're hiding in your room, that's really hard to do, okay? So number one, whom do you talk to every day and why? Number two, do you pray? How often do you pray? How do you feel after you pray? And number three, do you think you would be happier if you made time to pray each day? I'll give you a couple minutes because I'm going to set up the projector here for our next little video. So,
terms. My life is filled with paperwork. If I did not have to do one piece of paperwork here, I could work part-time. That's probably actually the truth because I deal with permission forms and legal forms and baptismal certificates and sending things out to churches that said, yes, this child was confirmed. So this one, the enrollment form, was actually due last week. So that's one form. If you do not know your confirmation name nor your sponsor name, that's okay. I just need your enrollment form. There is a possibility that, I'll take that. There is a really good possibility that if you were baptized somewhere else, but you had your first communion here, I have your baptismal certificate. I can double check for you. Um, if you're baptized at St. John Newman, you don't have to worry about it. If you're wondering about how do I get a baptismal certificate, if I have no idea where it is at home, all you have to do is call the church. They'll send it over to us. They do it all the time. We do it for them all the time. It's not a big deal. Um, also, you can also send me any form. Just take a picture of it and text it to me. I really will take forms that way because that's easy too. Okay, so that was the enrollment form in the baptismal certificate. This one, the permission form, is due as soon as possible. Um, for example, I already have one for Tanner. So if, and Elaine, I have yours too from youth ministry, so you might need, not need to do this. Um, this is important as if for some reason, like at the retreat or at potluck, I have no idea how we're going to do potluck in COVID time. This is going to be so much fun. Um, or if for some reason you're not here and your child, something happens, goes wrong, we have that permission form. Um, this one is also due last week, the confirmation candidate covenant. So that's what you sign, kids. The teens, that's the one that you sign. The one that's not due for a little while is your sponsor covenant, because you may not know who your sponsor is. This one's not due till January. We usually make it due in January because you might, it might be a relative, so you might see them over Christmas or Thanksgiving. I know some of that's changed this year, but that's why we, uh, we do it that way for January. This one that you got that I just gave you, Emily, um, your final report, that's not due, I don't think, till March. March 7th, so far away. Time's going to fly, so you don't have to worry about that one for a little while. Okay, any questions about the forms? You can give them to me before, after, throw them at me. You can give them to Abby in the back. She'll take them. Okay. Really, all the forms, I'll have to do with canon law. I really want to be a canon lawyer. Wouldn't that be so much fun? I also want to teach college, and I want to do all these other things, and I still want to be a doctor in my spare time, but yeah. just never stop dreaming, kids. Never stop dreaming. Okay. Let's watch this video, 4.2. It is called The Big Question. The big question, not just the little question, but the big question. Hopefully I don't blow out your ears. There we go. I didn't blow out your ears, that was nice.
Good, I'm going. I like that one too. Uh, page 92 in your decision point book. There are three questions, but I just want you to concentrate on the bottom two. So, you know, sponsors, adults, you answer too. It's not just about them. They can answer, but you can answer too. It's kind of fun to hear what both of you have to say. So question two says, have you ever asked God the big question? What do you think I should do? If you have, what happened? If you've never asked God the big question, why not? Do you know why most people never ask God what you want me to do? What did you say, Tracy? It has a little bit to do with that. It's really hard to ask God what you want to do when you're not sure you're going to want to do it. If you ask God, what do you want me to do, that means you need to be open to the answer. This is why there are people in this world who run from vocation. And I'm going to tell you a little story about Father Pete. Father Pete St. George is over at St. John the Baptist Dry Ridge, but he was at St. I's for years. He, did he do your first communion, Abby? Yeah, he did Abby's first communion. She's 22, so we Yes, and I've known Father Pete since before he was a priest, but when uh, Father Pete had knew that he should become a priest, he had that feeling when he was in prayer, he had that feeling that this was just where God was calling him to go. But he just would stomp his feet and run the other way, okay? Run the other way. But he knew God was calling, knew God was calling, knew God was calling, and just would not put in the paperwork, would not do it, would not apply. People around him are going, my gosh, you just need to go to seminary. The best thing about seminary, I'm gonna tell you, young men, is you can leave, by the way. There's, there's no danger in going to seminary. Just because you enter seminary, the school to become a priest does not mean you become a priest. Some of the best men in the world are men who started in seminary and never became priest. That includes my dad. My dad went to seminary, he left seminary, and he says it was one of the best experiences of his life. So he decides one night, <laughs> he's going to seminary. Now seminary started in just a couple days. So he goes to his parish priest, Father Modell, and says, I want to go to seminary. And Father Modell says, Pete, you can't, you, you can't go to seminary. It starts in a couple days. You haven't done any paperwork. You haven't done... He goes, if you don't get me to seminary this year, I'm not going. <laughs> Father Modell goes, let me make a few phone calls. So he figures it out. He gets it all figured out that he can start in seminary. Pete goes home two or three days later, and he says, hey, Mom. And his mom goes, yeah, I guess, I need a ride somewhere tomorrow. And she goes, to where? And he goes, to seminary. She goes, well, it's about time, because typically the people around you know better than you do where God is calling you. Don't be afraid of the answer. You never know where God's going to lead you. Okay, that's question number two. Question number three, if you spent 10 minutes a day in prayer every day for the next month, how do you think you might be different a month from now. So go ahead and discuss that, and then we're going to talk about the prayer process.
card. This card has the process, the prayer process that Matthew Kelly himself came up with after reading many saints, and it's not, he just didn't pull it out of thin air, his own experiences over the years, and he developed this prayer process. We actually now teach it to the itty bitty guys too, the second graders, um, a little bit of a simplified version. <clears throat> this is not the end all and be all of prayer, by the way, but I wanna give you a heads up and a warning. I take kids every summer, well, <laughs> except for COVID summers, to a place called Steubenville. I know, COVID just makes everything so much harder. We go to this conference, 3,500 Catholic teens are there. It's a very uplifting, moving conference for the kids. Um, there's something for you as a young person to see thousands of other young people like you um, in a place that they all love Jesus and they love the Catholic Church. It's very powerful. Abby went five times when she was in high school. Um, here's the problem with situations like this or learning prayer processes like this. Um, you come away with this idea that I'm going to pray and I'm going to do it all. I'm going to be so good at this. I'm going to start praying a rosary a day and start doing the prayer process every day. And it's going to be amazing. You know how long that lasts? That's right. It just doesn't last. It takes a good 35, I think it's 30 to 35 days to form a habit. Let me tell you, I warn the kids all the time, little small chunks get you a long way when it comes to prayer, a long way when it comes to prayer. You know, if you think you want to pray the rosary, by the way, there's an app for that. There's an app for everything um, like that. If you don't know how to pray the rosary, I would suggest only one decade at a time for two or three weeks before you add the second decade, the 10 beads and then the next set of beads. If you're gonna start the prayer process, I think this, it's awesome we're doing this Thanksgiving week. Do gratitude and do gratitude for a month. Then add in awareness, right? If you decide, I'm gonna do this prayer process, I'm gonna do it so well every night from now on because Santa's watching, it's gonna be great. Um, We've just known that it just doesn't necessarily work. We're not used to putting work into our prayer and our faith life. And if it's something you've not done before, it's a really hard habit to form because it's so much easier to say, hello, phone, hello, Netflix, hello, YouTube. Never, Ellie, ever. Jax is like, yeah, man. <laughs> uh, so that's my warning about this, little bits at a time. I love the gratitude piece. I'll tell you why after you watch the video. The prayer process.
He's so positive at the end. Let's give it a try. So uh, what I was going to tell you about gratitude is uh, I suffer from clinical depression, diagnosed for 19 years, probably have suffered from, with, from it for, I don't know, 24, 25 years and debilitating anxiety. <laughs> yeah, this is, by the way, any of you suffer from anxiety during a pandemic, it's loads of fun. Um, but uh, I feel like God has, by the way, blessed me with mental illness because I feel like I can really help other people with it, um, especially young people. But I know on a really, really, really bad day that if I do not take the time to do step one, my day stays rotten. Because there are times where I sit down to do step one to be thankful, and I try to do three things, and I cannot even think of those three things. And because I make myself really identify those, what are those three things today that in particular I'm thankful for, it really makes my day be so much better. And it also helps to remind me that God is there in every moment. And there's always something to be thankful for, even when life is insanely crazy. So. Um, and I also love number six is one of my favorites too because I love to pray for people and you can always say in your prayer and I'll pray for anyone who asked me to pray for them because <laughs> you know how people say, will you pray for me? And you go, sure. And then later you go, I don't remember. God remembers. So you just have to say, I'd like to pray for anyone who asked me to pray for them. So any questions about the prayer process? Okay, we're going to talk, um, because this might not be your cup of tea, and I'm okay with that. This might not be the way for you to pray, and I'm totally okay with that, um, and I'm going to show you why. In this lovely yellow book, your UCAT, you are going to find Starburst 469, which is way towards the back of the book. So really, it's page 258, but you need 469 the little starburst, 469. There's a boy in the desert, it looks like. Once you get there, you'll see. So page 258, but it's starburst Abby, Sarah's not here. I'd have her dance. She probably wouldn't like that, though. So Starburst 469. Like I said, there's a boy out in the desert there. Once you get there. Oh, my. So 
So 469 says, what is prayer? And the answer is, prayer is turning the heart toward God. When a person prays, he enters into a living relationship with God. So here's what's amazing about prayer. This is why I was wishing Sarah was here. Sarah, my friend Sarah knows a dance to the Our Father. Okay. When she dances the motions of the Our Father, that is prayer. Because okay. some of you will need to move to pray. And that's okay. I like to move when I pray. I put my little headphones on, I turn on the rosary, and I go for a walk. No one knows I'm not listening to music. I'm just listening to the rosary or the liturgy of the hours, which is something we could talk about some other time. But um, yeah, prayer can be almost anything as long as you are turning your heart to God. There's a book that's called Praying with Coloring. If you love artwork, Find a Bible passage, Google, great Bible quotes, and you can draw that Bible quote, if you guys are really into lettering or whatever, and draw and color around it and really concentrate on those words from the Bible, that is prayer. Okay? You can read the Bible, and I encourage you to do that, but there are other things that you can do. Um, movement, I said... Anything else, Abby? Singing, singing. Obviously, you know, there was some saint who said, but I don't really think that saint said, said it. I think they've disproven it, that singing is praying twice. But if you're singing a country song, it's probably not prayer. Ah, some of them you might be able to get away with prayer. But if you're singing a contemporary Christian song or you're singing at church, obviously that's prayer. You know, prayer is something said from the heart. Prayer can also be memorized. We memorize prayers, you know, your Hail Marys and your Our Fathers and all that that you memorize. The reason we do that is because there will be a moment in your life where you have no other words but those memorized prayers. The first time that happened in my life was in labor with her. And all I could say was, Hail Mary, full of grace, bless me, bless me. And I just prayed Hail Marys over and over and over and over and over again because I had no other words for God. Okay, those of you who've given birth, you kind of understand. 22 hours of labor, 20, 20, it was 26 hours of labor. And I still love you. Okay, bring it up every year. Her birthday was just the other day. Uh, and there are moments when people are dying and they haven't spoken for days. And I watched Father Kyle once, um, a couple summers ago, he was experiencing vertigo, so he couldn't drive, and um, a parishioner called the office and said, um, you know, Grandma's dying. Would you come over and anoint her one last time? And he said, sure. And so I said, you're not driving yourself. And I put him in my minivan and drive off to their house, and we arrive, and, you know, they say, oh, she hasn't taken anything to drink in a while, and she hasn't spoken to us in a while. He goes, that's okay, you know, she's, she's here enough. She, she understands it. We're all praying for her, right? And he goes in and he begins to anoint her. And when he hits the part of the Our Father, her eyes opened up and she prayed the entire Our Father with him. Because those memorized prayers are written on our hearts. And even in the moment of dying, that's, Sometimes those are the final words. My great-grandmother, she just prayed. I know she's holding her rosary. She just prayed Hail Marys over and over and over again as she was dying. Um, and it was beautiful. So they're really written on our hearts. That's why we make you memorize prayers is for that very reason. Because sometimes you have no other words but the words that were already given to you. Yes, absolutely, absolutely. So let's finish this. It says... Prayer is the great gate leading into faith. Someone who prays no longer lives on his own, for himself and by his own strength. He knows there is a God to whom he can talk. People who pray entrust themselves more and more to God. Even now they seek union with the one whom they will encounter one day face to face. 
Therefore, the effort to pray daily is part of Christian life. Of course, one cannot learn to pray in the same way one learns a technique. As strange as it sounds, prayer is a gift one obtains through prayer. You can't get there unless you try. That's what it's all about. Okay, it is almost time to go. So let's, you know, um, Matthew Kelly talks about concluding the prayer process with the Our Father. Um, I'm teaching first and second graders religious ed this year over Zoom. God help me. Um, And it's so funny. I had one under the um, coffee table last week. She was like under the coffee table with a big blanket. She was building a tent, and that's where she did religious ed from. Okay, whatever floats your boat. Um, But we have been teaching them that there are seven things we ask for in the Our Father. I don't know if you've ever been taught that, but there are seven things that we ask for in the Our Father. Um, And so the first one is, hallowed be thy name, that we ask that God's name will always be holy. Okay? Thy kingdom come, that we ask that the world that we live in today will one day we will join him in heaven. Right? Thy kingdom come here and that we one day join him in heaven. So there's seven different things we ask for in the Our Father prayer. So let's pray the Our Father, then you will be free to go. We do not meet again until December 20th. I know some of you may be on break. That's the way the calendar fell this year. If the numbers are really, really high or we go to purple, we would do an online, um, uh, online. you know, well, I send you the video and everything. We'll do it online again. Um, but hopefully we can get together. If you can't be here on December 20th, just let me know. And I already know Elena, your mama told me. We're good. Yeah. In the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit, amen. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Amen. St. John Newman, today's feast day is St. Cecilia, and I bet some of you musicians may pick Cecilia for your uh, confirmation name. So St. Cecilia, pray for us. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. You are free to go.